a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Welcome to another edition of Bearing Arms, Cam and Company. My name is Cam Edwards, and I am so glad you joined us on the program today. Uh, happy Valentine's Day to you, for those who are uh, celebrating. It is the 25th Valentine's Day for my wife and I. Uh, we actually met for the very first time in person uh, on a Valentine's Day weekend. Although 25 years ago, we decided not to make a big deal out of it in case uh, you know either of us were unimpressed with the other. But uh, no, it actually worked out pretty well. Here we are, 25 years later. So uh, happy Valentine's Day to you. Uh, also today, obviously, um, a, uh, a tragic anniversary, the fourth anniversary of the shootings at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Um, you know that you are a regular viewer or listener to this program. Uh, we have spoken with a friend, Ryan Petty, on numerous occasions um, since I've been the editor at BarryAndArms.com, talking about ways to prevent these types of attacks, not by trying to ban our way to safety, going after you know gun bans or magazine bans, but, but doing the things that actually can make a difference. And Ryan uh, has been just instrumental. Uh, over the past four years in in trying to put these strategies in place that really can make a difference. Um, I, my heart goes out to everybody uh, who is continuing to grieve and mourn the loss of loved ones today. Uh, and, you know, we're not going to spend the whole uh, day talking about this, but I am hopeful um, that with advocates like Ryan Petty doing the work that they're doing, that that we can make a difference. We can put policies in place that will protect students and staff, that'll make sure that individuals in trouble get the help that they need uh, before they go down a very dark and dangerous road. Uh, and again, the most important thing that we can do is to simply say something when we see something out of the ordinary. According to the Secret Service, they've investigated targeted school attacks, and over 90% of these cases, the attacker told somebody about their plans ahead of time. Either a friend, a teacher, a family member, they posted something online. But when we act on this information, lives can be saved. And I hope that that is going to be a lesson that we continue to carry forward. Now, we're going to be talking about the uh, criminal justice system here on today's Bearing Arms Cam and Company. But before we do, uh, with the political pressure on the left and the woke mob that is the Democrat Party, our society is in danger of becoming controlled by the cancel culture elites. Since when of the founders of our Constitution, the American flag, or folks like Dr. Seuss, and virtually anything else you can think of become anti-American? There has never been a better time in our nation's history to stand up against this woke mob and fight back, and you can do just that with this exclusive offer that I am giving my listeners and viewers for a limited time only. Now is your chance to win a signed picture by President Trump himself. That's right. Not only will you be taking a stand against the radical left, but you'll be entering to win a piece of history. All you have to do is text the word TRUMP to 55404 today to enter. That's T-R-U-M-P to 55404. And you can join the millions of Americans in standing up for President Trump and canceling the radical left once and for all, paid for by the National Republican Senatorial Committee. Uh, so I, I have to thank, uh, speaking of our listeners and viewers, I have to thank uh, uh, Jeffrey for sending me something that he he called an astounding and infuriating recidivist report. Uh, he said, another indictment of the lenient treatment of dangerous criminals that any age receive in liberal bastions like Chicago. This bleeping system, writes Jeffrey, has got to be fixed. And uh, Jeffrey, you're absolutely right. In fact, this this story is so infuriating that rather than just make it one of our recidivist uh, uh, reports. I actually wanted to focus on this and drill down a little bit deeper uh, because this really is, I think, it highlights a huge issue, and not just in Chicago, but as Jeffrey said, other liberal bastions, frankly, not even liberal bastions. I guess the real question is, is the juvenile justice system providing justice for juveniles or for the victims of juvenile crime uh, is it doing anything to rehabilitate young offenders, which is supposedly what the focus of the juvenile justice system is, right? We're going to save these kids uh, and help them turn their lives around. Are we doing that? In Chicago, I would argue, and in Illinois, I would argue no. Uh, the recidivist rate for juvenile offenders is incredibly high uh, in the state of Illinois. And I, and frankly, you know, we're seeing more and more stories like this headline. Well, not quite as egregious as this particular headline. This is from the Chicago Sun-Times. Teen attended hearings on weapons charge and then carjacked Lyft driver and gunned down 15-year-old, according to prosecutors, the same day as his court hearing. 
the same day. The Chicago Sun-Times says a 16-year-old boy had a hearing before a judge on a weapons charge. On the same day, he later carjacked a Lyft driver and gunned down another teen in Bronzeville, a neighborhood in Chicago, all while on electronic monitoring, Cook County prosecutor said on Thursday. Yeah, he was on electronic monitoring. The brutal Thursday afternoon killing, uh, excuse me, Tuesday afternoon killing, was captured on surveillance video and showed 16-year-old Anthony Brown get out of a stolen car, walk up to 15-year-old Michael Brown, no relation, and shoot the younger teen once in the head. He then stood over the younger boy, according to prosecutors, and fired an additional nine rounds into the teenager's body. Now, Anthony Brown, arguably, should not have been out on the street. And I think it is inarguable that the way the criminal justice system treated Anthony Brown allowed him to believe that there were few, if any, consequences for committing crimes. Anthony Brown's most recent history dates back to last June when he was arrested and charged with aggravated unlawful use of a weapon. He was carrying, carrying, a, uh, carrying a 22 caliber Glock uh, after a uh, foot chase. So at that point, he was not accused of actually pulling the trigger, but possessing that uh, Glock, probably a Glock 44, illegally. Uh, again, at the age of, well, now he's 16. So he was either uh, 15 or 16 at the time. He was released on electronic monitoring five days after that initial arrest. And then less than a month later, the electronic monitoring was dropped in completely and was replaced with a curfew order. Six months later, officers arrested him again. This is December, just a couple of months ago, after he ran from a car that had been reported stolen. They found him in possession of a nine millimeter handgun. And so the teen picked up a second unlawful use of a weapon charge. Um, it wasn't reported uh, that he was charged with uh, uh, you know anything related to the stolen vehicle, by the way, although the driver uh, of that uh, car was. Um, Anthony Brown, flash forward a couple months to last week, right? See, Anthony Brown has this court hearing. And according to the Chicago Sun-Times, he wasn't wearing a shirt during the live-streamed hearing. And so the judge said, come back the next day, quote, dressed appropriately for court. I, I, that, that, to me, is the huge red flag right there. So you've got a 15-year-old, excuse me, a 16-year-old. He's been arrested twice in the past six months for illegally possessing a gun. He's also been found inside of a stolen vehicle. He shows up apparently for this online court hearing. And he's not wearing a shirt. He's not taking this, he's clearly not taking this seriously. And so what does the judge do? The judge probably has two options at that point, right? Judge can say, you know what, Mr. Brown, this is ridiculous. I'm holding you in contempt of court. Um, we've got your you know, electronic monitor. Actually, I, yeah, I guess he did have the electronic monitoring device on because of his second arrest. So the judge could have said, this is absurd. You're not taking this seriously. We're going to help you take this seriously. Um, we'll be by to pick you up here in uh, just a few minutes, take you into custody. You can think about this. And tomorrow you can come back from a jail cell. You'll be wearing an orange jumpsuit uh, and uh, we'll make sure that you're dressed appropriately. Judge could have done that. Uh, judge didn't do that. Maybe the manpower wasn't there. Maybe the judge said, look, I got a caseload as long as my arm. I don't have time to spend on this uh, a, a kid. So, you know, we'll try again tomorrow. I don't know. But I do know that it seemed like, in this case, the system didn't take Mr. Brown particularly serious. So, so why should Anthony Brown have taken the criminal justice system uh, any more serious? Uh, according to a uh, defense attorney for Anthony Brown, the boy's living with his grandmother. He's been charged uh, with first-degree murder, vehicular hijacking. Uh, the 15-year-old who was driving the SUV at the time of the murder charged with possession of a stolen vehicle uh, by a juvenile. The Chicago Sun-Times also uh, found an interview that Anthony Brown had done uh, back in October. So this is after his first gun possession arrest, before his second gun possession arrest. Anthony Brown was an aspiring rapper. And uh, he was asked, I guess, in October, uh, his, by the way, his, uh, his name, uh, his rap name, 757 Baby Glock. Yeah, great. So he was asked, what can be done to change the violence in Chicago? This was last October. Brown said, quote, bleep, I don't really know because me, myself, I don't think the violence will stop. Mother bleepers die every day. 
Other bleepers could be dying right now. Anything. Everything that's going on daily, that's bleeps happening right now. That's what his message would be to other kids out there who think this lifestyle is cool. He said it ain't at all. Because once you're in this shit, ain't no getting out. And so if you got that chance to go on with your hoop dreams or whatever, if you're thinking like that, take it. You know, here's the thing. It wasn't too late for Anthony Brown to change. It wasn't. His initial gun arrest, unlawful use of a weapon by a juvenile, Look, I think those are, you know, pretty serious offenses. If you're not even old enough to legally own a gun, you definitely shouldn't be carrying it. I have, I have a different opinion about minors carrying firearms than I do about, let's say, legal uh, uh, adult gun owners who I believe should be able to carry without a, a concealed carry license. If you're 15 years old, I don't think you should be able to. Uh, call me crazy, but uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think it should work that way. But the system tends to focus like, look, if you're 15 years old and you're caught in Chicago, carrying a gun without a FOID card, carrying a gun without a concealed carry license, the system's going to go light on you because of your age, right? But if you're 23 years old, let's say you have a valid FOID card, but you don't have a carry license, or let's say you don't even have a FOID card, you don't have a carry license, but you're not legally ineligible to possess a firearm. You're not a convicted felon. You haven't been adjudicated mentally defective. The courts are going to come down hard on you. At least there's a greater chance that the courts in Cook County will come down harder on you for illegally carrying a firearm. Um, I, I think that gets, I, I, I think it gets it completely backwards. I think we actually need to be sending a, a, a much more uh, a coherent message to juvenile offenders that there, in fact, there are going to be consequences uh, for you violating the law. And I think we need to ensure that uh, adults who are legally eligible to exercise their second amendment rights can do so uh, without bureaucratic red tape, without criminalizing the exercise of a constitutional right. Again, I think Chicago and a lot of jurisdictions get it backwards right now. We're going soft on juvenile offenders. We're cracking down on uh, nonviolent possessory farm offenses among adults. And I don't think that's going to end well in Chicago or New York or Los Angeles or San Francisco or Baltimore or any of these other cities that have this mentality uh, not just uh, on the books, but but sort of inherent within the system itself. And so now you got a 16-year-old who, as I said, really could have turned his life around. If he had taken a guilty plea to carrying a gun without a license as a juvenile, he likely would have spent, at, at most, at most he would have spent two years in custody of the state. And I doubt sincerely that that would have happened. He would have had a chance to wipe his record clean. He would have had a chance to actually talk with counselors uh, and uh, people in position of authority who could help him turn his life around, who could put him on a, 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 a right track. But it sounds like Anthony Brown wasn't interested. Sounds like Anthony Brown, you know, was presenting this, you know, uh, world-weary uh, face at the age of 16. Ah, it's too late for me. It's really not. Now it's too late for Anthony Brown facing first-degree murder charges. Yeah. I, Anthony Brown is, if he's convicted, he has pissed his life away. Uh, and uh, even in Illinois, where they're pretty light on crime, Anthony Brown, if convicted, is likely to spend the best years of his life locked up behind bars. But it didn't have to be this way. I wonder, however, how common stories like Anthony Brown's really are, where the system is just sort of warehousing these uh, uh, juvenile offenders. There's there's no real effort at rehabilitation. There's no real effort at incarceration. It's just uh, check the box, uh, throw a, uh, a monitoring bracelet on them, put them on probation, check in with them every once in a while. I hope and pray that, uh, that that does the trick and we don't see them back here, which all too often, of course, it does not. I wish I had, you know a more optimistic take on what was going to happen in Chicago going forward. But I, I don't, because I don't see anything really changing in Chicago. Mayor Lori Lightfoot and Kim Fox, you know, they're, they're trying to play nicey nice. Now they, uh, they, they, they the big press conference last week, bringing charges against individuals who were involved in the shootout uh, that happened last year. And Kim Fox had originally said, no, we're not going to be charging anybody. And Lightfoot, uh, you know, went after Kim Fox. The politicians are, are, are on the same page or at least pretending to be on the same page here. But again, they're taking this and they're treating this as a 
as, as something that involves politics or, or something where the politics is the most important aspect of this as opposed to public safety. And so when you've got the mayor, when you've got the Cook County State's Attorney's Office, I'd say when you got even the chief of police or the uh, uh, police superintendent in Chicago, who are viewing this violence through a political lens, a lens of, okay, what can I do? Not necessarily, I mean, it's great if it reduces violence, but what can I do to make sure this doesn't impact my poll numbers, which I think is what's really going on here. That's where you get a lot of talk about going after the guns, right? A lot of blame shifting. Well, we got to change the federal laws. A lot of ineffective proposals that sound like politicians are doing something like a gun buyback, things of that nature. But honestly, unless, and again, I, I, I part of me, I, I realize I might even sound like a bit of a lefty here. But unless there really is re- real reform within the current criminal justice system, not to go lighter on criminal offenders, but to ensure that there are actual consequences. And yes, the consequences would involve for juvenile offenders both incarceration and rehabilitation. But the system is not delivering, it seems to me like, the system is not delivering either of those things on a consistent basis, which might explain, again, why juvenile crime, including juvenile carjackings, by the way, skyrocketing right now in Chicago. And since the criminal justice system isn't going to change, my next hope is that the uh, good people in Chicago learn to protect and defend themselves. And I hope one day that means that the firearm owner ID card is thrown out as unconstitutional. I hope that uh, the Illinois State Police continue to make improvements in the backlog because it should not take six months, nine months, a year or more for you to get permission to exercise your Second Amendment rights. When that happens, your rights are being violated, and that is exactly what's happening right now for legal law-abiding gun owners or or those who would like to be legal law-abiding gun owners in Chicago and the rest of Illinois because the state is uh, failing to uphold its part of the law requiring them to process void card applications and concealed carry applications within a timely uh, manner. They're not doing that which leads ultimately to more people illegally carrying firearms for self-defense, running the risk of getting arrested, running the risk of going to prison, particularly if you're an adult. Again, it's it's a vicious cycle of stupidity. And I believe the best way to address it would be to separate uh, our Second Amendment rights uh, from uh, 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 you know criminal law here, and ensure that legal gun owners can protect themselves with a firearm while going after those who are not legally eligible to own one and those who use a firearm in the commission of violent crimes. It's not rocket science. It's also not happening right now in Chicago. Again, not on a consistent basis anyway. So thank you to Jeffrey for uh, sending that story along. It is infuriating, Jeffrey, but uh, I, I'm glad that uh, you let me know about it. Uh, now, speaking of recidivist reports, you know what? Let's just keep this going. I was going to say keep the party going, but there's nothing, nothing, nothing party-like about this. This is from Florida, where a man accused of attacking a Orlando police officer has a long criminal history, nine felony arrests, and police aren't sure what it's going to take to actually keep this guy behind bars or or maybe in an institution. This happened uh, Thursday afternoon. Uh, a guy named James Mossity, identified as the suspect, according to the Orlando Police Department, Mossity, uh, long criminal history. Detectives wonder he, whether he's mentally fit to be out on the streets. He said he came up to an officer's cruiser and started beating on the car, which ultimately led to his arrest. Uh, the officer fired his taser. And pepper sprayed Mossity. They said it had no effect. Another uh, officer eventually tackled Mossity. They handcuffed him as he struggled. Orlando Police Chief Orlando Rolan said, uh, what we know for a fact is that he's a violent individual who's not afraid to fight the police, especially when he's outnumbered. Uh, officer checked out a local hospital, is doing okay. Uh, the chief said that Mossity, again, nine prior felony arrests, including battery and Orange County deputy. He said that Mossity may need professional mental help. He said, quote, once they're out on the street without access to medication or regular care, I think it makes matters worse. Well, again, that that's the issue, isn't it? But because Mossity didn't have a gun, uh, you know, this isn't much of a story. If Mossity had shot the officer, gun control advocates would be claiming that, well, we need more gun control laws. Okay, well, a gun wasn't used. But here you have a nine-time, at least, arrestee. We don't know how many felony convictions he has. Who police believe may be more, you know, appropriately confined in a mental institution as opposed to a prison. But the criminal justice system has failed this guy. The mental health system has failed this guy. 
And more importantly, the criminal justice system has failed the public. The mental health system has failed the public. Yeah, Mr. Mossity, I, I think, you know, obviously needs some help of some sort. But the public is not being helped by the unwillingness or the inability of the system to deal with people like Mossity himself. And that's why uh, the, that case is uh, today's recidivist report. Uh, now, our armed citizen story, also from Florida. Don't have a ton of information here about this case. Happened over the weekend, early Saturday morning. An intruder shot and killed after breaking into a home in West Palm Beach. This was uh, about 4 a.m. Saturday morning. Uh, according to authorities, police say a man and woman were asleep in the home. Uh, and a guy broke into the home through a window while the couple was asleep inside. The intruder turned on the bedroom light, waking up the couple. A verbal, a, a quote, verbal confrontation ensued, uh, which ultimately led to the homeowner uh, getting their firearm and shooting the intruder, who was taken to a, a local hospital where he was pronounced dead. The couple uh, uninjured, thankfully. Uh, the investigation does continue, but uh, at this point, it appears to be a, a case of self-defense. The police uh, aren't indicating anything uh, to the contrary. So we'll keep our eyes on this story. We'll bring you any more information uh, if it becomes available. And finally today, our good deed of the day. In the right place, at the right time, willing and able to do the right thing to help a, a child inside of a burning home in Warwick Township, Pennsylvania. This was uh, last week, and uh, you can see just there's an image from the officer's body cam. Uh, the respondent officer uh, first showed up, uh, the officer running towards the home uh, and, and yelling, uh, Hey, buddy, hang your hands down. I'm right below you, all right? We'll catch you. We'll catch you. Put your hands on the ledge and we'll catch you. Then another person joined in saying, yeah, it's only like six feet if you hang. Another voice can be heard saying, ready, get under him, get under him, get under him. Uh, thankfully, the child was able to escape through a second floor window. He was able to uh, drop down to the waiting arms of an officer and a member of the uh, Rothsville EMS. The officer suffered a minor injury when the uh, child fell into a first floor glass window. Uh, and so the officer uh, did have some cuts from that breaking glass. Officer also uh, suffered a little bit of smoke inhalation. Uh, both the uh, child and the officer taken to the local hospital uh, for a treatment for minor injuries. Uh, but thankfully, again, both are going to recover. And that is a uh, very good thing, thanks to the uh, life-saving efforts of that Pennsylvania police officer and uh, others, uh, perhaps good Samaritans from the neighborhood, who, again, were in the right place at the right time, willing and able to do the right thing to save the life of a child. We thank you for your very good deed. That is about all the time we've got for you on this edition of Bearing Arms Cam and Company. I want to thank you for being a part of the program. As always, don't forget, you can uh, become a VIP subscriber at BearingArms.com. If you go to the website, you like what you see, just go to BearingArms.com slash subscribe. Use the promo code GUNRIGHTS, and you can get significant savings on your VIP membership. You'll also... In, in addition to be uh, in addition to be supporting, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why English is my second language here. In addition to supporting the independent pro Second Amendment journalism that we do at BearingArms.com, you will also be the beneficiary of exclusive content, analysis, news stories you won't find anywhere else because it's our way of saying thank you for showing support for the work we do. We'll be back tomorrow with another edition of Bearing Arms Cam and Company. Until then, be well, be safe, and be free. 